the lazy peon. What's up guys and welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. Today we're going to be counting 10 common mistakes made by new WoW players. Starting with number 1, joining a cesspool guild. A cesspool guild is commonly known as a guild that is formed for the sole purpose of making gold for the guild master. This is done through the cash flow perk where players earn gold for the guild by killing and looting enemies. These guilds are usually level 25 and incentivize players to join them through the guild perks they'll receive upon joining. These perks include 5% bonus XP whilst leveling, the mass resurrection ability and being able to purchase heirlooms with gold from the guild vendor. Joining a guild should be about making friends, being part of a community and tackling group content together. However, in a cesspool guild, you'll generally experience a lack of social interaction, no organised group events and an influx of players joining and leaving all the time. When joining a guild as a new player, aim to look for one that's highly social and has a lot of active online members. That way, they can help you out with advice and put you in the right direction in terms of learning how to play the game. Once you hit level cap, I'd recommend you either join a raiding guild or a PvP guild that has their own team speak or ventrilo server. That way you can sink your teeth into endgame content and communicate effectively with your guild, making friends and having fun along the way. The whole cesspool guild issue probably won't be a thing in Warlords of Draenor though, since they're going to remove guild levelling and some of the perks. Number 2. Playing without keybinds and keyboard turning. As a new World of Warcraft player that hasn't played any similar games, you'll most likely start the game clicking your abilities and turning your character using your keyboard. This however is a highly inefficient and awkward way of controlling your character in comparison to using keybinds for your abilities and turning your character using your mouse. This was a mistake that I personally made all the way up until I hit level cap back in Wrath of the Lich King. Eventually I realised how slow I was playing in comparison to everyone else and I found a key binding guide on YouTube that helps me improve my gameplay dramatically. As a new player I'd recommend playing with key binds as soon as you start the game. That way you won't have to make the awkward transition from clicking to key binding further down the line. It may be hard to start with but in the long run it will make you a much better player. Number 3. Leveling with your friends. Whilst leveling with a friend seems like a good fun idea initially, you'll soon find it rarely works out and can be frustrating due to time constraints. You see, everyone has different schedules and availability for playing the game. If your friend already has a capped character and is in an active raid guild, they probably won't be able to commit to playing with you every time you log on. Leveling with your friend can be fun, but only if you each dedicate one character to play together on. If you're wanting to get to level cap as quickly as possible, it's better just to grind it out alone instead of having to rely on someone else. That way you're not restricting yourself to someone else's schedule and you can level at your own pace. Number 4. Creating too many ults. We all love to create ults and try out different classes and specs from time to time, but there's some players that are constantly creating new characters for even having one capped character. Whilst it's necessary to roll a class that you find fun and enjoyable, it's also very confusing having 11 ults all under level 20. At low levels, classes generally have very few abilities, so creating an ult and leveling through the starting area doesn't really give you a true sense of how that class will play at endgame. Also, leveling through the starting area too many times can lead to burnout before you've even got a capped character. I've personally had a lot of friends that have made this same mistake as a new player and quit the game as a result of it. When deciding on a main character, you should consider what type of gameplay suits you best. Do you like being up close and personal and smashing face? Or do you like attacking enemies from distance or even being a support player and healing the group? These are things you should consider before rolling a new class. You should also watch YouTube videos on different classes that help you make that decision. Another reason a player might create an ult is because a certain class has become overpowered during the current patch and they want to be top of the damage meters and destroy everyone in PvP. Rerolling to an overpowered class is another common mistake because odds are, by the time you cap that character or the next patch is released, that class you decided to roll for the sole reason of it being overpowered has now been nerfed heavily and it is now on par or weaker than everyone else. As a result of this, you'll probably end up going back to your previous main character and think to yourself, why did I waste all that time re-rolling a class because it was overpowered? Number 5. Quitting the game before hitting level cap. A lot of people try World of Warcraft, but only some stick around long enough to experience the endgame content. Some people aren't even aware that there is any endgame content. From a new player's perspective, they're stuck in a massive world, grinding through 90 or 100 levels for seemingly no reason. 
Eventually, the monotonous grind through old, outdated content will lead to burnout, and unless the player has friends that play the game, or is aware of the fun that can be had at max level, they'll most likely think to themselves, Nope, I've still got 45 levels to go, and I'm already bored out my mind. I've had a lot of friends try to get into WoW, and most of them quit for this reason. They don't see the point of carrying on doing something they find boring, when there's no reward or fun to be had at the end of it. Maybe Blizzard could do more to entice new players to stick around until hitting max level and experiencing end game content. Number 6. Account sharing. Account sharing is actually more common than you'd think and often occurs because WoW costs a monthly subscription. Account sharing is more common in younger players because they don't have any money of their own and their parents dictate what they can and can't spend their money on. So what do they do? They beg their older brother, their dad or even their friends to let them create a character on their account and level it whenever their account holder isn't playing. So why is this a problem or a common mistake? Well, for one, account sharing is against the game's terms of use, unless it's a parent sharing the account with their child. Account sharing with anyone else such as friends or other random people can result in the account being banned, suspended or having its security compromised. If this happens, you've lost the character you spent ages levelling and you'd have to start all over again. This is why it's best to have your own account and not share it with anyone, because that way you don't risk losing all your hard work and dealing with not playing whenever the account owner wants to play. Number 7. Vendoring Profession Ingredients As a new player, levelling up, you're going to collect a lot of seemingly useless junk on your adventures. With the initial small amount of backspace, and due to your lack of knowledge on how to make it bigger, you'll probably end up vendoring everything that isn't a weapon, armour, food or drink. Well, this is a mistake that most new players make, myself included, because that junk you decided to vendor is actually selling for 100 times the amount of gold you got for vendoring it on the auction house. Why? Because it's an ingredient used for levelling a crafting profession. Unfortunately, there's no current system in-game that shows the auction house value for these profession ingredients unless you download an add-on, so noobs everywhere will continue to unknowingly flush precious gold down the toilet until they find out about the auction house, and learn the general prices for things. Number 8. Asking other players for gold. Begging for gold is not only looked down upon in World of Warcraft, but it's downright annoying. As a new player, you should never beg for gold, as it gives you a bad name and most of the time players won't give you anything. If you see another player begging or asking for gold, simply make them aware of other means of making gold such as professions, playing the auction house or even questing. Number 9. Being abusive to other players. Unlike real life, World of Warcraft gives players a certain level of anonymity, allowing them to effectively become the characters they play. But with this character name to hide behind, some players feel as though they can get away with saying things they wouldn't usually get away with saying in real life. What some players don't realise is that like real life, being abusive or inappropriate to other players can have consequences, such as being banned or in extreme cases being reported to the police, except if this happens you can't deny anything because Blizzard have access to the chat logs. When interacting with people in WoW or on the internet in general, just remember that everything can be traced back to you. Being abusive to another player will also give you a bad reputation and no one will want you in their guild or in their group. Number 10, buying gold, accounts or levelling services. Sometimes WoW can be a huge grind and some players just want to skip that grind and get straight to the good stuff. As a result of this they may consider buying gold, accounts or even levelling services. So why is this a bad thing? This is a bad thing because WoW works on the principle that if you work hard enough you can get anything you want in game and achieving the things you want gives the player a sense of accomplishment and pride in what they've done. If you can just pay your way to the top, you don't feel that same sense of accomplishment and pride in what you've got. Not to mention that paying for these services are against the game's terms of use. When you level a character from 1 to level cap by yourself, earning gold and gear drops along the way, you start to feel a connection to that character, almost as if you've been on a long epic adventure together, and to skip all of that without experiencing it at least once kind of feels like you've cheated the game. If a new player decided to pay their way to level cap, also buying high-end raid gear, it would be like putting a child at the front wheel of a Ferrari. They'd have no idea how to control it, and they'd not only be a risk to themselves, but to others. Leveling up, making your own gold, and earning your own gear is like a rite of passage in well, and if you can't do it yourself, you don't deserve to take part in the content that requires you to have achieved a certain standard before gaining access to it. That's it for this World of Warcraft video, if any of you guys can relate to any of the mistakes previously mentioned, leave a comment below.
thanks for watching. See you guys.